Hey, welcome to the party, pals. Here are the DVD reviews. Countdown to Expendables 2 keeps on rolling. Today we got a fucking great one from the Bruce Willis vault. Hostage. All right, Hostage is a little weird movie, man. Got a real strange premise. Starts out, Bruce Willis, a fucking hostage negotiator, motherfucker. It's crazy, man. Bruce starts out, he got some long ass, fucking gray ass hair. He got a big fucking beard. Beard so thick, he actually takes a regular hair comb, sticks it in there. He's fucking combing that shit. I saw you, man. He's so gray and dirty and filthy looking. Beginning of the movie, Bruce Willis, man, he looks like a homeless motherfucker. He's trying to get some white trash motherfucker not to shoot his family, not to shoot his fucking wife and little kid. Turns out the guy's some kind of weird Jesus freak or something. He's going on about God. Next thing you know, kills his fucking family, kills himself. Fucking Bruce is all disgraced, man. He was the top L.A. hostage negotiator. Now he's dog shit. Nobody wants him. Cut to two years later, he's a fucking bald-headed sheriff looking more like modern-day Bruce Willis. Nobody likes him in this small town. He's fucking, they, you know, they kind of hint out that he's a drunk. Actually, one of the deleted scenes, he was always drinking, but they kind of cut that out of the movie. So he's just kind of just like a shell of his former self. He's not a badass Bruce Willis at all. Cut to Kevin Pollock in the movie. He got a, He's kind of like the rich guy of the fucking little town up in Northern California. He's got a couple kids, man. Bratty as fuck. A little kid. All precocious and shit, man. And he got a real slut fucking daughter. Always want to be showing titties and stuff. Like 15 years old. They go to a store, get some carry-out food. Next thing you know, the slutty daughter in her fucking schoolgirl outfit, she catches attention of a couple greasy motherfucking criminals. The main one, called Mars, played by Ben Foster. He got some long fucking jet black hair. He's all creepy, fucking pale looking. He looks like the fucking lead singer of AFI. And he's got a couple other little hillbilly underling motherfuckers, a couple brothers. Next thing you know, they're fucking eyeballing the slut. They notice her dad drives a fucking cow, I guess, or some shit. So they want to go rob him and steal the car. Next thing you know, Kevin Pollock's at home trying to fucking be a single parent to his kids. These really motherfuckers bust in with guns and shit. They want the keys to escalate. So shit goes wrong. Kevin Pollock gets bonked on the head with a fucking gun. The alarm goes off. Fucking cop, lady cop shows up. Fucking old Ben Foster, fucking David Havoc from AFI goes outside. Fucking shoots her dad, man. Next thing you know, Bruce is responding to the call. Trying to fucking save this lady cop, but... Hey, shit don't work out, she fucking dies. It's a big fucking hostage situation. Fucking Bruce is in charge of first, but then everybody gets involved. They bring in some cheese dig to replace Bruce and all this shit. Bruce is like, hey man, I did whatever I could. I tried to save this lady cop, didn't work out. Hey, you take over cheese dicks. Bruce goes to go home for the night, going to watch the shit on TV, sees what happens, see if anybody else gets shot. Next thing you know, surprise, surprise, my shady motherfuckers. And some fucking hoods and shit. They kidnap Bruce. They fucking show him his family, man. They're going to kill his family. And that's another thing is Rumor Willis plays Bruce's daughter. Who is Bruce's daughter in real life, of course. And I don't know, like... I don't know. She does a good job, but it's just like a weird part. It's kind of like the role is like he can't connect with his daughter and shit like that. So they have one scene in the beginning where they try to hit it off, but they're all awkward and shit. Uh, it's just, just kind of funny casting, but anyway, Bruce produced this movie, so he's going to put his fucking kid in it, whatever. Turns out, Kevin Pollock, surprise, surprise, was accounting for some, they don't really say mobsters, but you think it's some mobsters, but then it turns out maybe it's some government shit, some shady shit. But the problem is he has all this data from all this fucking sl uh, sleazy shit, shady shit, fucking international shit on a fucking burnt DVD in his DVD collection. Kevin Pollock fucking hit in the head like a fucking turnip laying on the ground, man, he can't do shit. So, Bruce is in charge of trying to take over the hostage situation again. He finds it in. He finds a way to take charge. Fucking gets on the phone with the little kid in the house. The little kid in the house. Hey, man, it turns into fucking Die Hard meets Home Alone. This little motherfucker's crawling through air shafts and all this bullshit. It's like people on their stairs shit. He's crawling through the wall, sneaking all around the house, trying to steal the DVD for Bruce, get it back out of Bruce so they don't kill Bruce's family. But meanwhile, also, Bruce has to try to save these fucking kids from these fuckers. Because, I mean, these are some dumb hillbilly hostage motherfuckers. They don't have no idea who they're fucking with. But the thing that's interesting is this actually has a French director. It's actually a guy that directed The Nest. Real good action director, real good visually stylish director. So well, this normally would just be like a kind of like a, almost like a TV movie. People on the phone, hey, give us hostage, all this shit. It turns into like this kind of weird grand opera thing. The score is very epic, very bizarre. I mean, this movie just has a lot of elements. It's done in a strange style. It's very, I'll, I'll admit, man, it's very fucking weird. But that's what makes it fucking good, man. It's just, you're going to remember it because it has so many weird operatic shots and shit that you wouldn't normally see in a type of movie like this. So anyway, getting back to the story, I can't say too much about ruining it, but shit goes south in a lot of different ways, it gets really tense, Bruce has to kick some ass, Bruce kicks some ass, and then at the end you think the movie's over, it turns out Bruce gotta kick some more ass, so, you know, not exactly up to the fucking original Die Hard standards, but I think Bruce was better in this movie than it has been in a lot of recent ones. I wouldn't give Hostage since it has such a unique 
uh, directorial style and everything, and Bruce actually brings his fucking A game, does some good dramatic acting in this, as well as kick ass. I want to give Hostage a good, memorable 8 out of 10. I mean, it's a kind of weird, quirky one, but it worked for me, man. What can I say? Picture and sound. Full disclosure, man, I got this fucking Blu-ray at Target for 5 bucks. I'll tell you, it was a great $5 well spent. Movie looks beautiful. It has really deep, rich fucking blacks in it. Shot at night. Very atmospheric. Very kind of Norish stylistic. And it all comes through within the transfer. Transfer's really good. Really solid. The sound is coming with some DTS HD Master Audio. Sounds really fucking good. They just did a bang up fucking job. Picture and sound, I gotta give it a solid 8.5 out of 10. Special features, I got the audio commentary by director Florence Siri, the French guy I was talking about. He's like, I'll tell you what, man, it really wasn't, even though, you know, he's got a thick accent and shit, if you bear with it, he talks a lot about the themes and shit. This guy was a, even though he's an action director, kind of, he's a thinking fucking action director, you know. He really want to put a lot of motion and shit in this, make this a good, worthwhile movie. Really good fucking commentary, man. He really breaks it down. Taking hostage behind the scenes featurette. Kind of like some 8 minute, kind of just, you know, rush through a standard bullshit. Not too bad, fucking nothing too great. Then it got extended and deleted scenes from the director. Fucking, you know, I like it when they have the deleted scenes, but I really like it when you can turn on director commentary as well, and they'll tell you, hey man, this was in the movie, and we had a cut out for this and this. Special features, not a whole lot, but the commentary did score some major points. I'm going to go special features, and I'm going to go 7 out of 10. Alright, so that's it for Hostage Man. A nice, underrated, forgotten Bruce Willis film, in my opinion. Hope you check it out. Hope you like this fucking strangeness that is on display here. Expendables 2, getting closer and closer. We've got three more weeks of going deep into the back catalog of Expendable Stars. So keep checking us out. We'll have more good shit coming. yippee ki motherfuckers!